Da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, hi there. Welcome to Peter in the kitchen. Peter in the kitchen. I'm going to make almond milk, and I figured maybe you wanted to watch me make almond milk. So what does it take to make almond milk? It takes almonds. <laughs> okay, so what we did is I took a cup of almonds. Where's my cupper thinger? I took a cup of almonds, fresh almonds. Now you can get almonds a number of ways. First of all, you don't want roasted almonds. Uh, you don't want anything. You want just regular almonds. If you can get raw almonds, that'd be good. Costco has them. Uh, if you can get unpasteurized almonds, that would be awesome. Even better. It's hard to get them because somebody got salmonella once, once, and it caused a ruckus. Then somebody else got salmonella like two years later for the second time, and that's it. The U.S. government stepped right in <laughs> as fast as they are they do everything you know really quick right so anyway they made it so you can no longer purchase retail unpasteurized uh, almonds which means they're cooked so what's the point uh, however there's a loophole in the the law you can get a bag of unpasteurized almonds on Amazon because they come in from Spain Spain the place over there not over there, over there. All right, so you can order the almonds. I'll, I'll put a link to them. Another thing that you can get is if you can find a local farm, the local farm can sell them to you directly and they don't have to be pasteurized. However, you can only buy 100 pounds a day. Now, that would be a problem for you and me, right? So anyway, this is raw unpasteurized almonds from Amazon. And if you're interested, if I remember, I'll put the link below. So what I did is I put them in 24 hours ago in some water. I rinsed them first in a strainer. This is a strainer. Do I need to put a link below for the strainer? I didn't think so. So I put a little salt in there because these are unpasteurized almonds. I think they're from Spain. Um, and I just let them stay overnight on the counter. Uh, and then in the morning, I put them... Uh, in the fridge to get cold. So now it's the afternoon, so they've been almost 24 hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the almonds out through the strainer. The water becomes quite dark because it gets all the cookie stuff off. Actually, there's stuff in the almonds here. I'm sorry I have my back to you. Can you see me over there? Actually, uh, there's a, there's a word, and I should have looked it up because I knew I was going to video this. I'm going to put them in here again. I'm going to swoosh like a washing machine. Bloom, 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 bloom. And I'm just kind of like looking to see if the water gets dirty. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to just rinse it all off because there's something in the brown shell that actually is supposed to make your stomach sick. So now I'm going to put them in my Bloom Bloom washing machine again and see if the water stays clear. Bloom 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 Oh look at that, the water stays clear. And they really plumped up. Look at how fat that is. They plumped up nice and juicy. Okay now some people will actually take the time I'll show you. You're going to laugh. You're going to laugh. You're going to laugh. I'll put this over here. I'll do this so that I don't drip water on the floor like that. Okay. So some people will take and they will actually peel the almond. <laughs> I can't believe people do this. And they take the brown off. And once you get from the top to the bottom, kind of like cleaning an egg, it all of a sudden comes off real easy. So if you wanted to do all of a cup or a cup and a half of almonds and take off the brown, go at it, my friend. But you get a beautiful white almond and you know there's a uh, special satisfaction of a job well done for making your almonds white and taking the brown jackets off. And you put them in the blender. Now I got a Vitamix, a Vitamix. There it is. 
sitting right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these almonds. I'm going to put them in the VD mix. I put six cups of water, five and a half really. And mm, they smell really good. Now, don't contaminate your strainer. You're going to use it again. So I'm just going to give it a quick rinse. I'm going to put it over here. What? What did you say? I heard you. How come I have two Vitamix containers? Well, they had a recall on the short 64 ounce containers uh, and they let me keep the original one. So I got two. I got two mints in one. Now I put a quarter teaspoon of salt in there. Then I put the top on here and I'm going to blend it. I'm going to blend it for about two minutes. Over blending, you're saying, right? Just for a little bit. No, most people are under blending. So I'm going to put this on and I'm going to tell you a little story while the almonds blend. And, and there we go. This particular machine shuts off by itself. It's got a timer. So now after you do that, you actually let it sit, kind of like steeping tea. I let it sit for about two minutes by the timer. I'll be back in two minutes. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Oh, the timer has gone off, so let's turn the timer off. And now my almond milk has sat there for two minutes, just kind of soaking, like when you make tea. So now I'm going to take the cover off, and I'm presented with a foamy mess. <laughs> so I'm going to rinse the top because I like to be clean sometimes. Not all the time, but boys will be boys. What can I tell you? You're hearing me because I'm wearing a, la uh, what do they call it? A lapel mic. And one of the questions I get all the time is what camera are you using? I don't know. It's a black one. It sits on a black stand and it's got a piece of glass on the front. No, it's a GH4. I'm using a lav mic and I'm shooting in 4K. Does that satisfy your curiosity? If you got questions, ask me below, below. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the strainer and I'm going to strain it a couple of times. Now I've learned the hard way just to go back and forth between some bowls. Yes, I rinse the bowls first. I'll take that, move it out here, and I'll take the strainer. The reason I use the bowls is because it makes a mess. And when we make a mess, then I have to clean it. Is there anybody else around here to clean the mess? I don't think so. So basically I'm getting most of the stuff out. Now, one of the things that I used to do, and successfully too, was rather than just go back and forth and do all this straining like this, um, I put it through my auger juicer. If you have an auger juicer, uh, this will go through it very nicely. And all this leftover particles, you can dry it uh, and make like an almond flour. Uh, you can ground it up put a little bit in the dog's food. Um, the other thing you could do with it is just let it rest in the sink for a while and if you need it you can come back for it later and if you don't need it I find that it eventually just kind of disappears. <laughs> kind of like putting it in file 13. Okay, so we've gone through the, the first major straining. Let's move this out of the way so you can see. Now we're going to do back and forth just a couple of times. And hopefully I won't spill it. So what we got so far is a one cup of almonds. And six cups of water and we're going back and forth. Oh, there's more in there. 
Let's get it out of the strainer. And you say to yourself, well, Peter, you're mixing it back in the dirty bowl. Yes, dirty bowl, dirty bowl. But basically I'm getting the bigger crud out so that I have an easier job when it comes time to clean the uh, nut bag. It's a nut bag. I bought it on Amazon and it's 100% cotton, unbleached and that makes it important for me. So now I'm gonna use this other Vitamix uh, container and I'm going to pour my almond milk into the nut bag. Not nut case, nut bag. Okay. And now I am going to pretend that I'm milking a cow. Going to start at the top and I'm going to gently squeeze the almond milk out of the nut bag. Now, there's different people online that tell you all kinds of different ways on how to do it. You do it this way or you do it that way or you do it that way. I just like to get it done. I try to get it as dry as I can. Now you would save a lot of time if you put it through your augmented, your, your auger, not augmented, your auger uh, juicer. So you go, what's an auger juicer? It's not the kind that spins up at a high speed. It's a very low speed juicer, like 40 revolutions per minute. And it basically resembles what your teeth does. Oh, by the way, wash your hands before you start all this because you don't want your dirty, filthy hands, uh, you know, even though it just puts a little extra love into the almond milk, but you don't want your dirty, filthy hands in the almond milk. And some people will do this a second time. Run it through the nut bag. It's a cotton nut bag. Why don't I put a link to it below instead of trying to describe it for the next 20 minutes. And now, see, now it's getting very dry. So what I do is I come over to the sink, sinky sink sink, and I just turn the bag inside out and when I turn the bag inside out you say to me Peter why are you wasting your motion picture to show me to show us you cleaning the bag because I'm gonna put it in the bag a second time it's simple as that and when I turn it inside out ba boom ba bing ba bam it just cleans right up and all these little pockets with the almond dust just goes away. See? This is the almond meal. You should save it. You shouldn't do like I'm doing. You shouldn't throw it away. You should save it. Now I'm squeezing that out. And I'm going to, I'm going to rinse this out, right? Because I didn't rinse the original container. And I don't want the grits. I like a creamy, smooth almond milk. So basically, I go the extra mile. How far would you go to get a camel? You shouldn't be smoking. Honestly, no smoking, please. Okay, so let's go. I'm gonna put the milk from this container to this container through the wash nut bag. And you know, you're gonna be surprised that there's more, even though it's been through it once. But look at how easy it is this time. And the little leftover residual is sitting in the bottom of this bag. And I'm not going to bore you washing the bag now, but it's very easy to clean. I'm just going to put it over here on the strainer. And we're going to go to the next step. Ah. So now this is basically your finished almond milk. But you know what? It's never satisfied me, although I act like it does. Uh, but it's basically like I've made almond tea. <laughs> because it's just like a, a watery almond milk. It doesn't resemble milk at all. But it tastes like almond milk. So I learned, I read something on one chef1ingredient.com or something like that, where they learned how to thicken it up without adding all the crapola that they put uh, to make it almond milk in the store, which is carrageenan uh, or different kinds of gums. And what you do is you take half your almond milk. I haven't done this before, so we're going to find out together. You're going to take about half of your almond milk, 
little bit more. And you're gonna put it over a fire. There we go. Now you save the other half. Now this is our clean almond milk. This now needs to be washed and cleaned. What else? This container and this container needs to be washed and cleaned. And now we have two bowls that need to be washed and cleaned. All this to make almond milk. Sheesh, just buy it in the store, right? Yeah, but the point is when you buy it in the store, they put uh, carrageenan and stuff like that. Let's see. Ah, I got a container here from, uh, this is from Aldi. Aldi is a, uh, a store that sells a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a discount grocery store and they they make their own stuff and rebrand original stuff okay so you got almond milk filtered water filtered almonds calcium carbonate uh, potassium citrate sunflower lecithin uh, gel and gum vitamin A very good but I put that in my smoothie uh, when I make it uh, palamate vitamin D uh, D alpha Oh, I can't pronounce that word. Uh, and vitamin E. I just have almonds and water and salt. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stirrer. And I'm going to bring up the almond milk here. Not going to let it boil. You know, when I make yogurt, I bring it up to 180 degrees. So right now it's 105 degrees. So I'll bring you guys back when it gets closer to uh, the 180. Uh, so this way you don't have to be bored through the whole thing. So, but before you go, the, the theory is at a certain temperature, uh, it changes consistency. Now I haven't done it before. This is, the first, this is where I usually end. And then I put it in, the, uh, in a pitcher and I use it for the next few days until it's time to make more almond milk. So now the only problem with it is it's never satisfying like a nice thick milk. Uh, so as it was written and I'm repeating it now is we basically made almond tea, almond water. Okay, so what we want is almond milk. By bringing it up not to a boil, but just below a simmer, I'm gonna bring it up to 180 degrees and see what happens. Um, and then I'll be back when we get closer. So rather than making you stick around, I'll be back when we're at about 180. Okay, we have brought it up to the 180 degrees and it really didn't change characters. So I'm keeping, I'm, I'm bringing it up to a higher temperature. Uh, I'm approaching 208 and it's starting to look like it's changing character now. Uh, I'm looking to see I don't see any bubbles like a simmer and I'm at 209 degrees now it doesn't burn like milk I could tell you that much so we're still at 209 yep yeah, and it looked like it's changing characters at 209 to 210 right about there I lowered the fire because I'm afraid to burn it. So I brought it back up a little bit because I want to bring it up. It keeps dropping back down to 207. I want to bring it up to a solid 209, 210. I think 212 is the boiling point. So I could see it on a ring around the outside where it does get thicker. All right, we're at a solid 209 degrees now. Up, I'm seeing a little bit of bubbling. Still at two. Oh, we hit 210. So we're 210. I see a little bubbling. 211. And I'm going to shut the fire off because I see some bubbling and I don't want to bring it to a boil because it said not to bring it to a boil. But what it did is it was coming out like water before. Now I could see like a milk on the uh, on the spoon so it's coating the spoon and this is at about 210 possibly 211 let's see how high this got yeah 210 211 so I turned the fire off now remember we're doing this together 
And the whole point is that we're going to sacrifice some of this milk in enzymes. And I'm going to put it in a bowl of cold water because uh, I want it to cool off. And I'm going to put it in with the rest of the milk. So I'm going to stir it in here for a few minutes. I put some ice cubes and water in here in case you're wondering what it is. And let's see if that's bringing the temperature down. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's not that, not that hot. So what I'm going to do... Now what I read in the directions is to pour it in from the hot directly in here. And I didn't want to do that. I want to keep at least half of it living and half of it is sterilized. So now... Let's pour it in here. There's no burning, like milk would, would burn. Milk would definitely burn. So let's put this on the Vitamix for a second. And I'm just going to give it a stir. I'm not going to blend it. Just a very light stir. Just to mix it up together just for a minute and then this is warm to the touch so I'm gonna put this in the fridge for an hour or so and let it cool down and let's see if it makes a thicker almond milk I'll be back in an hour <laughs> okay guys I am back uh, truth be told I said I was gonna be back in an hour however I did get to wash everything as you could tell it's all cleaned up all the bowls everything got washed the Vitamix has been put away if you're going to use a, a, if you don't have a Vitamix, use a blender. This isn't uh, something major to do, uh, but this is the big test. Uh, so let me tell you what I did. I boiled it. Uh, not a rolling boil, just where I started to see bubbles, but I kept it there for about a minute or two. Even though the, the transference happens right at about the simmering point and you're done. But I just did it a little bit longer. So this is the taste test. This is where I have the almond milk. So after I washed up, I got invited to my brother's house for dinner. So this taste test of the milk is like three hours later. So this has had plenty of time to get really, really, really cold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour some out. I can tell you it pours and it looks like silk and it runs back down in like milk rather than like almond tea. So I'm going to test it. Let, let's taste test it first and then I'll blah 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 blah. Okay. Mm. This is definitely different. This is big, big news. Mmm. It's silky, smooth, and it's got body to it. You know when you make iced tea or regular tea and you boil water and you put the tea bag in, you're coloring the water? It doesn't change the consistency of the water. Well, that's what I've been doing when I make almond milk. I've been basically making almond tea uh, because it's just thin and runny, but this is thick. It's not super thick, but it's thick like milk like milk <laughs> how do i describe it over the camera it's thick like milk this is amazing no chemicals no added gum no added uh, carrageenan or whatever it is no cornstarch no corn powder no rice this is just thickened it up now from what i read if i want it thicker if you make six cups in your blender, the more that you put into the pot to bring it to a simmer for a little bit, not long, two, three minutes at the most, even if that, you could probably just bring it up to a simmer and you're done. But you know how guys are, a little is good, a lot is better. Uh, maybe I don't need to do that. So at whatever your tolerance level is, because you know when you bring something to a simmer, you're killing the enzymes, okay? And if you're having almond milk because you want the enzymes from the almonds 
and any kind of heat, that's why you get them raw and unpasteurized, uh, starts to kill, uh, you know, the living stuff in there, all right? So that's a given. So if you don't care at all, you can make it as thick as you want. Uh, out of the six cups, you can, I did half and brought it to a simmer, and then I let it cool a little bit and poured it in to the part that had not been simmered, and then I let it cool off quite a bit, and that made it to the consistency of milk. So let's say you want it thicker than this. You do more than half or do the whole thing. Let's say you say, well, I don't care if I was going to buy pasteurized uh, almonds. It wouldn't matter anyway, would it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. So this is really big news. You can get almond milk without chemicals and without added ingredients that are natural or unnatural that adds carbohydrates or other stuff to your almond milk to make it like a milk consistency. Big, big news. If you watched all the way to the end, <clears throat> you know how come, how you have milk sometimes and there's like, not a phlegm, but there's like a, there, it, it's, this is wonderful. So now I can make this sweeter by adding anything I want. Let's say I was on a low carb diet, which I'm trying to be on. I could add a little stevia. Let's say I wasn't on a low carb diet. I could add maple syrup. I can add uh, sugar. I wouldn't suggest that. Uh, make it a little bit, just a touch of sweetness because milk has a little bit of sweetness and this doesn't have that. Uh, I did add a little vanilla in there. So this is a success. So you can have thick almond milk that's like regular milk just by taking half of it and bringing it to a simmer on the fire in a clean uh, uh, pot, letting it cool off so you don't destroy what the other half. After it cools off, you pour it in, you stir it up, put it in the fridge for a couple of hours, and you've got cold almond milk. Wow, 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 wow. This is a big wow. I guess I'm getting overly excited, but I can't wait to put this in my smoothie tomorrow morning. Forget it. All right, Peter's in the kitchen. Yep, that's me, I'm in the kitchen. Thanks for watching. We have success here. Big, big success. This changes the world, <laughs> okay? Because now you can come off of dairy and instead of having an, uh, a container of almond milk that you buy, oh, I still got one here. Instead of having a container of almond milk that you buy from the store that's got gum in there, carrageenan, carrageenan, um, and, and other stuff that I can't pronounce, okay, potassium citrate, citrate, calcium carbonate. Nah, none of that's in here. This is just almond milk that you watched me make. And all I did to change it from almond water <laughs> to really almond milk. This is really surprising. You know what I wonder? I wonder, this is worth a couple of extra minutes, all right? If you're already bored, goodbye, but this is like, this is like amazing because that's the major thing I didn't like about the almond milk I made compared to the almond milk that I buy in the store. Now, if I just put this in, look, look, it leaves a coat. Your almond milk doesn't do that. It leaves a coating. Ha ha. <laughs> so this is successful. Yes. Thank you, God. I finally figured out how to make a thicker almond milk. All right. Peter in the kitchen. Catch you later. Bye. You're still here. Bye. This is pretty darn good. Wow. This is like going to make my almond milk a joy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness.